So good morning, everyone. First of all, thanks for inviting me here to present at, the, at this interesting event. So, um, so I am Francesco Labrese. I'm a research manager at the IBM Research Lab. And uh, here I'm going to show you, as Tim was saying, one of the projects that we are doing uh, in terms of uh, leveraging mobile phone data for, uh, let's say, developing smarter cities. And uh, in particular, the project here focuses on uh, um, the use of call detail records from the telecommunication network in order to help uh, essentially cities provide a better transportation network to their citizens. And uh, um, the focus of this project uh, and where also we see more interest in terms of uh, you know, developing solutions to help cities uh, develop, be, develop better service for citizens really on, uh, on developing countries. And uh, the stress is really uh, put in those areas where there is a lot more urbanization happening. So what the city is looking um, and providing service to their citizen, citizen right now might not be any more adequate in five years from now where the urbanization is going to grow much more. Uh, at the same time, when you look at developing countries, we also have the challenge that uh, uh, cities don't have a lot of money to invest into new infrastructure, and in particular, uh, while in, uh, let's say, in the Western country we see uh, city instruments with a lot of sensors, one of the examples is actually the city of Dublin, that we are also working with, uh, where they have sensors uh, under the, uh, the road to control traffic light or GPS on the buses and so on. Well, in developing countries, that's not really uh, the case. And so the challenge is really uh, how we can leverage opportunistically um, sensed information in order to, first of all, provide a better understanding about how people are use the, the city infrastructure and on the other side provide tools to recommend um, essentially uh, city officials how to better uh, allocate resources for people. And of course, telecommunication network data, as was described also in the previous talk, is a very interesting data source uh, from this point of view. So uh, if I go a bit more specific about the problem related to urban mobility, uh, uh, there essentially, and here we're focusing in particular in, for instance, on public transport, that is one of the uh, you know, most interesting um, uh, essentially transportation resources that the city can provide to their citizens. Uh, you probably know that essentially uh, the way <coughs> that the city can plan the public transportation network is usually starting from surveys or starting from data from actually the census that we fill every five or ten years in order to get an understanding about what their uh, citizens' habits in terms of where they live, where they work, and the type of you know trips they do in the city, and use that data to then feed in the essentially the uh, optimization models that uh, have been developed during the last 30, 40 years in, in the transportation uh, planning uh, community. And uh, as you can understand, uh, you know, issuing uh, surveys or um, um, using uh, data from the sensors is actually quite, quite interesting, but it's also very expensive for a city or for a country to do, and especially in developing work that's actually not really happening because of um, the, the large investment that uh, need to be uh, essentially that are required. So we are looking here at uh, um, showing how instead we can use data from a telecommunication network and in particular CDR to achieve similar type of uh, um, outcomes in terms of first of all modeling uh, people's mobility in the city and then provide tools to the transit agencies to plan better um, services for their citizens. And in particular, in this particular case, we focus on um, uh, a city in Africa, Abidjan, that is the largest city in, uh, in the Ivory Coast, also thanks to the data provided by Orange uh, as part of this uh, uh, Data for Development Challenge. 
And uh, um, that's a very interesting cities. It's a similar part in what you see in many other cities in developing countries where uh, you have some public transport, there are roughly 100 routes there, uh, but most of the people actually travel to these informal minibus services. And that the reason being is that, first of all, public transport is a bit more expensive, but mainly it has not been very well defined, designed to accommodate uh, you know, how people will, will, would like to travel in the city. Because it was designed several years ago and the city has been developing uh, quite rapidly in the course of the recent year, uh, while instead the minibus are actually much more flexible because they don't need to, they are not essentially regulated. But on the other side, of course, those are also the ones that pollute the most and they have very poor safety record. So the goal of, the idea about proposing this project as part of this challenge was, uh, can we instead provide the transit agency with a better visibility about how people move in the city so that we can recommend them how to improve the transportation network and make it more uh, um, efficient for people to use. And uh, to do so, essentially, we, we leverage data about uh, half a million people in the hourly cost provided as said by Orange as part of the Data for Development Challenge. And this is essentially called detail records. I mean, you probably all know about what that is. And anonymized call detail records that were released to the research community, so uh, roughly 200 research teams around the world. Uh, for about, and data was uh, uh, two weeks per user, overall uh, about five months of, um, of data set. Um, and of course, Orange did the previous, uh, you know, anonymization style, so uh, they somehow were sure that the data uh, was okay to be released to the research community, and still anyhow under a non-disclosure agreement. And uh, the, uh, the project we proposed essentially was a system that leveraging this data, first of all, extract a model of uh, on human demand in terms of mobility, and then also makes recommendation to a transit agency to how to adjust the current transit network in order to uh, maximize the travel demand that is being met by public transport and also um, recommend ways in which we can improve the traveler experience in the network by minimizing their passenger travel time and wait time. And uh, interesting also we can essentially model what's the uh, effective ridership that every, let's say, single bus will have on the network so that we can also evaluate statistically what will be a value of money of uh, providing a new route in the network itself. This project, as Tim was say, was awarded actually the uh, best development site award. It was, you know, uh, discussed in many media recently. Um, summarizing, uh, you know, the data set we have been using, as I said, it's half a million people in the Avory Coast, and uh, we matched the data with uh, the roughly 100 routes that were available in, in the city of Abidjan, and uh, um, essentially uh, the cell phone data was used, so each individual was, let's say, tracked during the course of the two weeks so that we could identify a significant location for each individual person. And by looking at that, we can essentially estimate what are called origin destination metrics that essentially in transportation represent the fact that we have a number of people that from a particular location in the city move to another particular location in the city at the particular time frame. Um, and we estimated by looking at this data from half a million people, roughly 50,000 origin destination metrics. Um, and essentially, uh, I, I can start giving you know, some picture of what the current transit system here is in Abidjan. This was data set that we extracted from uh, you know, the public website. Of course, you can understand also getting data about how the bus routes are laid out is actually quite difficult to get in developing countries. So we were able to estimate roughly what the transit system provides. And as said, instead from the mobile phone data, we inferred the origin in destination metrics that uh, is also called travel demand. Essentially, for each two cell phone tower in the city, we could identify how many people are traveling um, 
during the course of the day between those places. And what you can see on the graph on the bottom left is essentially a classical mobility uh, pattern that uh, we see in every city. So a peak of traffic in the morning where people are actually traveling and a peak in the evening where people are getting uh, home after work. And that's actually was interesting to discover in the data itself and somehow could validate the, the data. On the other side, the graph on the right is actually also a comparison of the trips that we were able to identify with a so-called gravity model. So in transportation, um, usually a very simple model of describing mobility of people is actually assuming that the mobility between two places is uh, proportional to the um, population in those two places divided by the square of the distance. It's a very good rough model, but actually works relatively well to represent mobility on a uh, high level. And um, we discovered that also the bubble phone data was able to represent uh, similar type of behavior. So we could assume that the data itself was a good proxy to uh, infer mobility of people at the aggregate level. At the same time, actually, for each individual, by looking at the most used cell phone tower at night or during the course of the weekdays, we could also identify home and work location. That's another interesting aspect uh, that uh, uh, it's very relevant to then characterize essentially how people and where people are traveling. So by identifying for each individual their uh, key activities that they do in the day, we can also characterize essentially the type of trips that people will want to make to understand how much we are essentially uh, the city is helping people traveling for work or traveling to, to, um, to reach other activities. And, uh, you know, uh, Abidjan is very similar to many other cities uh, like in Europe where the city center is where most of the uh, work locations are, as you can see in the map on the right, while people are essentially uh, living in many other parts of the city like you see on the map on the left. Um, and uh, another interesting aspect that we could estimate from the mobile phone data was also not only, let's say, the places that people visit and so the, um, uh, let's say, the origin destination flow, but also the sequence of places that people visit when they travel in the city. So that was very interesting because we wanted not only uh, to understand uh, where people want to go, but which potential path they will want to take to reach their destination. And that's important because it allows us to come up with what we call candidate new routes for public transport. So what you see here is some of the patterns that we have extracted from the analysis of the half a million uh, mobile phone traces in order to then infer uh, what the potential uh, new bus route that uh, we could propose to the transit agency there. Some of them actually really expect what the bus route actually look like. Some some others are actually potential new bus route that uh, we can uh, propose as part of the optimization module. And this is all started automatically, essentially, from, from the CDR data. Um, Starting from this modeling that was done on the data, then we focus on the optimization uh, problem. The optimization problem was uh, if we have a current transit network and we have a current uh, travel demand that is represented by, as I said, what is called origin destination metrics, we want, first of all, to infer what is the current uh, uh, use of the transit network. So what, how many people are actually taking each individual bus from which stop to which other stop, and then we want to identify for each trip what's the most likely travel time that people will take to go from every point A to B in the city, and also in which places people will actually uh, have to wait, for example, for a new bus to be to then connect to the subsequent leg of their journey. So by looking at that, we can essentially evaluate the uh, optimization uh, uh, function that will tell us uh, uh, how much essentially people are penalized by using public transport transport in terms of, you know, travel time they need to spend, the wait time they need to spend. And uh, by applying essentially the OD metrics on the data, we can essentially have a measurement of uh, how the current transit system is actually providing the service to the citizens. 
After that, we can essentially identify what are the gaps in the current uh, transportation network, so figure out which trips uh, between A and B in the city are actually the ones for which uh, people spend most, much more time and it's not well served by public transport. And there, we can essentially propose remedies by for instance, suggesting new routes. So this is the mathematical model, but we, I will not go through it, just saying that it's a large uh, optimization model, that uh, non-linear optimization model, but it can be solved with current tools. And the point was that, uh, we, as I said, from the data we can estimate uh, the ridership for each route, and here you see some statistics from the route, and then uh, we can estimate, uh, uh, we can propose, uh, f still from the data, we can propose uh, potential new route, and we can identify where those new route uh, could improve ridership of the network. So I'll show you the outcome of the, of the application. Essentially, this is a visualization that shows in pink uh, the current network in, uh, in the city of Abidjan. And in blue, uh, some of the proposed new routes that uh, we came up with uh, through the optimization model. And those new routes are essentially able, by just adding three new routes on the network, actually one is just an extension of the network, we're able to estimate also a 10% improvement in terms of travel time for people. The reason being that uh, the current network is actually was designed several years ago, so it's not really meeting the fact that, for instance, there is a new development uh, very close to the sea on the south side of the city that is said we are able to identify by looking at the data, the mobile phone data from last year, and so we can identify where are the gaps in the current transit network, and by proposing those three, three new routes, so essentially we can allow people to travel much faster toward the city center where they are the, they have the work location and so on. So uh, this is a very quick presentation about this project that uh, um, you know try to, to show you how a potential application of, of mobile phone data, in particular call detail record, for a smart city use case. And uh, uh, this is something that uh, uh, essentially we have been presenting to the Orange Challenge, and now we are looking at ways to actually uh, you know uh, test case in a real environment and recommend this through to transit agency and evaluate whether the, let's say, the prediction we can make through uh, the modeling and the mobile phone data can then be actually achieved by uh, proposing new route and testing the ridership of the new route. So thank you very much.